Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So last year, I decided to keep a diary, something that I've not done for years. I had thought to use it as a way of getting into journaling, but as the days and weeks went by, I realized that I am actually more of a chronicler than a journaler, and I don't think I could have chosen a more unusual time to chronicle than 2020. I mean, who would have thought at the beginning of that year that we would be living through a pandemic. Looking at my entry for this time last year, I saw that the pandemic didn't feature as it hadn't become a thing of concern yet. And my thoughts were turning towards the soon approaching month of Ramadan. And that got me thinking, thinking about the Ramadan that is soon to come. Because as I record this talk, there is just under two months until the month of Ramadan begins. And I'm wondering, as I have for many times at this point in the year, am I actually looking forward to it? I mean, of course, ideally, as someone who hopes to live pleasing her creator, I would want to shout out, yes, of course I am. But as with most things, looking deeper and thinking honestly, I'm hoping to really get the most out of these pre-Ramadan weeks. It's not that I've not had positive experiences before in Ramadan, but I know that it's not always been the game changer that I've hoped it would be. And I don't want to leave the whole month to chance, if you understand my meaning. Because simply, Ramadan is too special a time for me not to get into mental training for it. I really do want it to be the complete inside out detox that I know that it can be. But I know it's true to say that if I think deeper, there are also feelings of anxiety, of getting up early to eat all, what all the Ramadan guidebooks tell you should be a healthy, filling meal. The stress of being too tired to focus not only on my work and family, but also my spirituality for long stretches of time. And this is what I want to tease out of my brain in time for the start of Ramadan. One thing that I think is important for me to focus on is that I'm choosing to fast the month of Ramadan. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that fasting the month of Ramadan is a compulsory act of worship for Muslims that are medically fit enough. But in the sense that my life, your life, is just that, a series of choices. Just like I choose what to eat and what time I sleep. And I know absolutely that when I don't eat well and I sleep at some crazy hour past midnight, that these choices affect my body and my mental health negatively. I know that by choosing how I dress when I go out affects the way people judge and treat me. And I know that when I chose to be a Muslim, how that shifted my outlook on what was important for me and how I wanted to live my life. Because everything in life is a choice so that helps me to make a mental shift in my perspective and i say to myself almas no one is forcing you to fast you're choosing to fast to show allah how much you love him and even more importantly i remind myself that allah loves his creation and he's not asking you and i to fast as a punishment because if I did think that, then what does that say about my opinion of Allah? Do I think that he wants me to dread the approach of Ramadan? Absolutely not. I chose to be Muslim and part and parcel of that is that I trust that Allah will make anything that I struggle with manageable. I just need to accept that he is the all wise and the all merciful. So. What I'm thinking is that any of the apprehension that you or I feel about managing the fasting, managing the lack of sleep, juggling work, worship and everything else possibly stems from the fact that we know that this month is so very different from the rest of the 11 months of the year. 11 months of the year where I eat and sleep what and when I want. But now this one month everything will be so very different and if me saying that triggers a nervousness in you 
then I think it's time to think deeply about who we want to be. Do I want to be the best that I can be? Am I happy with everything about me or are there any bad habits that I want to break? If the answer to that last question is yes, then as with anything in life, change doesn't come for free. How can I expect to be a better version of myself after Ramadan? If I carry on with the same thoughts and the same negativity about my abilities and to keep the balance, which is such an important Islamic maxim, I have to remind myself that having bad days while I'm fasting doesn't make me a bad Muslim. It just makes me human. If all the thoughts I have about myself are negative, I will just end up spiraling downwards. So instead, I want to train myself to replace any unhelpful thoughts with kinder ones. Instead of focusing on the previous goals I've set in Ramadan's gone by and not reached, I'm going to aim to appreciate the intention behind my struggle, to be patient, kind and grateful, because even when I lose that focus, I know that Allah always looks to the, to the intention behind my every action. For the month to really be a detox for my mind, body and soul, I need to understand a few basic things. That Ramadan is an exceptional month of blessings for everyone, not just for a chosen few. That it is because of his love that Allah's mercy and forgiveness are readily available for anyone who believes in him, no matter how much they struggle to maintain their connection with him. And a thought that is so much more of a reality in this time of pandemic, that this chance to spiritually cleanse myself, inshallah, if I live to reach Ramadan, is truly a gift from my creator when so many that were with us last Ramadan are sadly no more. That's not to say that this Ramadan will possibly not be without its struggles. A year of living in social isolation and lockdowns that are on, then off, then on again, has no doubt taken its toll on all of us. But being present to the here and now, instead of focusing on the past or the future, will help ground ourselves, and if nothing else, in these uncertain times we need to take time to pause. We need to take time to reflect and maybe take time to reset our spiritual compass. And what better time than the month of Ramadan? Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Glory and praise be to you, O Allah. I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except you. I beg of you your forgiveness and repent to you. Ameen.